I had a friend who used the fizz, pop, bop pronouns and she wanted a girl because she didn't want to give birth to a fist. Every white or non-black teacher had to stand up and publicly denounce our ancestors and in front of the whole class he said that detransitioners do not matter. Little did he know he was talking to one. I've been told that dating girls would be so much easier and that they will eventually turn me. And it's like half man, half woman. And actually asked me to change my pronouns because I was too basic. I said no and she broke up with me. Hey guys, it's Misha and welcome back to my channel. So I'm so excited today because I'm going to be reading about your experiences with woke friends, family members, anything to do with woke issues at work and school. And I'm getting these responses from a community post here on YouTube and also on Instagram, a post there and also the DMs. And of course, I will be keeping it anonymous. I'm just going to use Jane and John for all the names. I was dating this guy, John, in my freshman year of university and he started to really get into his TikTok account where he talked about LGBTQ stuff. We are both bi, so I didn't think much of it and even thought it was cool. But soon he started to go by he, they pronouns and all his internet friends were so happy and then he used he, her. I asked if he was trans now and he said yes because he's non-binary. He didn't change anything about his looks and I was confused. I met this girl from math class while he was with me one day and said, this is my boyfriend, John. He got so mad right in front of her and yelled at me that I'm his partner, not boyfriend because he's non-binary. I told him I want a boyfriend, not a partner, and he called me transphobic and posted on his Insta that I was a liar about being bi, actually trans and biphobic, and a horrible person who bullied him by not accepting his identity and calling him my boyfriend. People commented that I'm a bitch and I will get what I deserve and that they are so sorry for them. I even got death threats from his best friend. She texted me, honestly, just delete yourself at this point if you're gonna endanger trans people like John. You're disgusting and don't deserve them. I ended up so depressed and alone because no one would talk to me and called me transphobic. This is insane. You're endangering trans people for questioning how your boyfriend who is presenting as a boy is trans or even just saying, okay, you're whatever you are, but I want a boyfriend, not a partner. That's endangering trans people. That's transphobic. And then they say you lied about being bi. Like these people will just make up anything just so that they can call you biphobic. Because I guess it would be hard for them to be like, yeah, she's biphobic, she's transphobic if you were bi. So they're saying you lied. My best friend of six years recently developed a TikTok addiction. She said her screen time is 10 hours and she even left our volleyball team. I noticed she changed her pronouns to she, they, of course, and then cut off her hair and said she was a guy. She wore a binder and I agreed to call her a guy if it made her happy. So her new name was Finn. I'll just say Finn because for some reason, a lot of trans people like that name. We are 15 and she even convinced her mom to let her start taking testosterone. Her voice changed later on and she has facial hair. But then she changed her pronouns to he, it, and then they, them. I told her I'm not gonna call her an it or a them because it doesn't make any sense. She called me transphobic, obviously, and we stopped talking. I looked her up and turns out she goes by she, her again and grew out her hair. But on her TikTok, I can hear her voice is still low and my friend that still talks to her says she hates the way she looks and sounds and also has health issues after starting hormones. I wish more of us could have spoken up against her going on hormones at 15, but we didn't want to be labeled transphobes. You're 15. Of course, you don't want to be labeled transphobe. A lot of grown-ups are afraid of that, right? And cancel culture, especially when you're younger and you want to have this group of friends. The most concerning thing about this for me is the fact that her mom let her go on testosterone at 15. I don't know if she got any surgery. I hope she didn't, but... It's tragic. In the beginning of the year, my class had one non-binary girl and the teacher gave her extra help always and was extra nice to her. The teacher said she was also non-binary and had a wife, which doesn't make any sense, right? So this is one of those non-binary lesbians, right? Okay. Uh, but anyways, my teacher suggested the girl, Jane, uh, make a group chat for other non-binary folks. Why do they love the word folks? Folks this, folks that, I don't know. It's just everywhere. I see it all the time in the class. Why do they need their own group chat? Good question. I thought it was so weird. Plus, I didn't know others identified as non-binary because they didn't. But slowly, all her friends said they now are also non-binary and towards the end of the year, literally half of all the girls in my class say they use she, they. One even started T, which is testosterone. Fantastic, fantastic. You have a non-binary lesbian teacher who suggests that the non-binary girl make a group chat with all the other non-binary kids 
separate them from the rest of the class. Obviously, that's what you should do as a teacher. And then they can chat about being non-binary, not being a man or a woman, encourage them to go through their gender, you know, whatever journey. And then one ends up starting hormones. Why would you need hormones also if you're non-binary? Why are you trying to be a man? If you're non-binary, it's not a trans man group chat, it's a non-binary group chat. So why would you need to take testosterone? My daughter started to hang out with this group of girls who used to bully her for being a Christian. I tried to talk her out of it, but she said she agreed with them now and forgave them. I never pushed her into being religious. I still ask her to go to church with me, but don't force her. She is 14. After a few weeks, she said she is non-binary and trans. I had to research everything she told me and knew it was because of her new friends, obviously, as she had never experienced any dysphoria and was even very girly and had crushes on boys. Soon she cut off her hair in her room and dyed it pink. I was all for self-expression, but she seemed miserable. She's now asking to go on testosterone and wants to wear a binder and get surgery. She has even changed her pronouns four times since hanging out with these girls. I hope she grows out of this and I have offered to take her to a therapist I know to be good. She refuses and says she knows she's trans and even shows me TikToks of trans girls explaining why they transitioned as proof, right? Because therapy and TikToks telling you you're trans, I mean, the TikToks win, right? It sounds like a very stressful situation, especially when you're watching this happen and you know this is a social contagion and you know this is because of those girls. I am a Muslim girl and recently started university. There's a boy in my class who started to say he's a girl and wear dresses. I am not allowed to shake hands or hug boys because of my religion and one day he tried to hug me as he said bye after we worked on a project and I said I cannot. He got so offended and said he is a girl so why not? I said I respect him and I asked him to respect my religion because he is born male and I can't hug him. He called me a transphobe and my other friend from this class told me I was being transphobic too and should be ashamed of myself. The professor saw this happen and came to tell me that hate speech speech is not allowed in his class because they don't care about freedom of religion. They care about their freedom, you know, to express themselves in whatever way they want. But you practicing your religion and not being forced to touch a man that they can't respect. A few years ago, my best friend Jane came out as bi and the theater kids I was friends with had an actual party for her. No joke, with cake and balloons like a coming out party, lol. I was one of the few people who wasn't out as anything and I felt really out of place and alone. So I came out as gay, I wasn't even interested in dating at all to be honest, and I got so many compliments and support. My best friend Jane asked why I never go on dates, so I started to go on dating apps and matched with girls and hung out with them but didn't feel like I could actually date them. I told her this and she started sending me TikToks on different sexualities I might be instead and I said I didn't really care what I was. She thought this was offensive and said her identity is who she is and I shouldn't be dismissive of that. I was so tired of their obsession with labels. It's all that they talk about. I love how when you said, you know, I don't think I want to date girls. I'm just like, I don't really care what I am. She starts sending you TikToks just so you could be included, like trying to help you like you are part of the community. Just here, pick one, pick one of the labels. Just let people be people. Why do we have to label everything? Why is it so essential to have some sort of label attached to you, LGBTQ or otherwise, right? Why? They were also super racist to white people and called them crackers constantly, which made me uncomfortable. Eventually, I found normal people after joining a swim team. One of the girls is actually bi and no one talks about her identity constantly. We actually talk about school and swimming and I've never been happier to get away from those girls obsessed with LGBTQ labels. And I am so happy for you. This is a rare case where you actually can leave that friend group and find normal people not every school has that, so congratulations. But that actually is a really good idea. I think sports in general, you'll find more well-rounded individuals there that aren't obsessed with labels because they have something to do. They have something they're passionate about, especially if it's something to do with like a team, right? Or like a community. I told my colleague I was single and he offered to introduce me to his friend. I asked what she was like and he described her as kind and beautiful. So I said, sure. We met up and she was clearly a man in a wig and a dress taller than me and even had a super low voice. I was respectful and said sorry, but I wasn't interested, and he asked why, and I said I'm straight. He said he was a woman, and I said I'm looking for a biological woman. He said I'm a bigot and a hateful man, and that all men are the same, meanwhile he's a man, and started to get loud and aggressive. We were at a bar with other people around us. Definitely was not kind, nor beautiful, or even a woman as he was described. I'm just picturing the It's Ma'am video. It is ma'am! Right before him, that's sir! sir. Mother 
See, this would have been good information to share. He's not passing, right? Your colleague, I think, should have told you, you know, I have an option, but it's, you know, it's a trans woman. Are you interested? Rather than deal with all of this. Last year, my girlfriend started using ZZEM pronouns after joining an LGBTQ club and actually asked me to change my pronouns because I was too basic. I said no and she broke up with me. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm sorry. I'm 16 and there was a man in a skirt in the girls' restroom. I was uncomfortable and so were my friends, so I asked him why he didn't use a gender neutral restroom, which our school had. He said that he was gender fluid and that he felt like presenting as a girl that day and to shut my transphobic ass up. I complained to the school and they said he's allowed to use whichever bathroom that matches with his gender identity. Yeah, that's okay, right? Let's let men go into the women's restroom with 16 year olds as long as he has a wig on. As long as he has a skirt on, he doesn't even have to have a skirt on. If he says he's a woman, if he feels like a woman that day, you're a bigot if you question that. In sanity. So I go to school in Florida and I had to take a required gen ed class and I thought you might be interested in my assignments. So here is their module. Identify one example of how US society is heteronormative. This is what you pay for your kids to write about and to learn at school. Why do sociologists find it important to differentiate between sex and gender? What importance does the differentiation have in modern society? Gender and sex are completely different. Gender is a social construct. This is presented as a fact. And you think that if this person said, actually, I don't think those are two different things, you think they would get a good grade? No. So as someone who has been in the anime convention community, I have witnessed the trans and gay phenomenon take over young vulnerable women for like a decade. Some aspects of it have been heartbreaking. I can give you some examples. What these young women do is often this. You can see it in series like Free, Legendary Defender, Haiku, Yuri on Ice. It is always the same general plot. A group of young androgynous boys, often in a sport team, that have a strong bond. What the young women do is pretend they are gay and then imagine themselves as the boys. It took me a while to figure out why this is, but I'm certain I know. Typical heterosexual relationships have a strong social expectation, especially for women. They are asked to take responsibility for the home, the emotional vulnerability of men, add in the sexualization that women feel. What happens with these women is if they are insecure or figuring themselves out, the added pressure of being in a heteronormative culture is too much and they seek a way out. And the best way out is to not be a woman. Also, gay relationships seem egalitarian, so they are compelling. I think you're onto something. On TikTok, I saw a lot of people like cosplaying different characters, and the girls almost always like cosplay guys. I've seen women follow this pattern so many times. I knew another one that got to the point of undergoing HRT and having her voice deepen. And while I was initially happy, I noticed she was not. Her personality disappeared and she got more withdrawn. I've seen these women change personalities, become depressed, and in some cases even die. That was actually the daughter of a friend of mine, and it was a suicide. I've also seen them cyberbully each other, especially when one is in a relationship with a man. Yeah, especially with the whole support thing, like, oh, the trans suicide rate is so high because there's not enough support. There is more support now than ever before, and yet the suicide rate isn't decreasing. Maybe blindly affirming their gender identity that may change every week is not the answer. I started doing community theater at places where the teachers were directing. They became my friends and it meant a lot to me. I also made a lot of friends in the community. Then 2020, George Floyd and BLM happened. They all started posting their black square profile pics and saying the most awful things about police officers, that they are all racist and all they do is kill black people, defund the police, ACAP, etc. My dad has been a police officer for over 20 years. They knew and didn't care. I have had nothing to do with them since. Nobody cared or asked why I suddenly disappeared and unfriended them all. They showed their true colors. My dad does more to help people in one day than they have in their whole sorry lives. When I was, you know, around those sorts of woke people during the BLM riots, I heard a cab, all cops are pigs. We should kill cops, kill all cops. I even saw a poster from my friend's university. They literally post that on their fridge. Meanwhile, if they ever have an emergency, who are they gonna call? It's just disgusting. Recently, my school hosted a pride dance where they hired drag queens to come to school. Lots of conservative parents were furious about the dance as well as some students. I'm not even right wing and I was upset. Kids from school on social media were bashing people who were upset about the dance saying that they're disgusting, evil. Okay, what is a pride dance? Whose idea was it to have a pride dance? You have a month. You have a club, now you get drag queens to perform for you when there are 16 year olds around. 
I mean, if we have drag queens performing for babies, twerking in front of babies, can we be surprised? Unfortunately, no. I go to an art school in Massachusetts. I took a psychology class in personality and we were at the end of the fall semester studying for the final. This particular topic was on identity. He was also talking about trans rights and how we're regressing. I raised my hand and asked him about detransitioners and in front of the whole class, he said that detransitioners do not matter and that he knew the numbers. Little did he know he was talking to one. He was also separating the class between cisgender and transgender. Talking about things like gender fluidity and gender queer. I, wait, what class is this? Psychology class. I challenged him on these terminologies multiple times just for him and the blue haired women in my class to roll their eyes. It's made me scared to even ask a reasonable question. Because you are a detransitioner, you'd think that the professor, psychology professor, would love to hear from you, would love to hear your experience when talking about gender ideology. But no, of course not, because that doesn't go along with his narrative or her narrative, so you gotta be silenced. This is essentially preparing our future psychologists who will pass on that woke narrative of affirmation and continue to produce more detransitioners in the future, 100%. And to make matters worse, here are some of the bathroom signs. Oh my gosh. So this one, it just has the man and woman. I guess it's both, but someone put tape. This one says, hashtag give it a rest. And it's like half man, half woman. I've never seen that one before. This one says woman, but like crossed out with like a pen, like someone scribbled over it. About a year ago, I was living in Dallas, working at a public charter school in a rough part of town. High crime, gang violence, etc. I, a white woman, was teaching alongside a predominantly black faculty staff and teaching predominantly black students. Not that it should matter, but unfortunately, for the sake of this experience, it did. Before the first day of the school, during a professional development day, every white or non-black teacher had to stand up and publicly denounce our ancestors and apologize on behalf of our family, contributing to centuries racism and ultimately being part of the problem in America today. Being a new teacher, I of course went along with the motions and did as I was asked to. I was thanked for beginning to learn my unconscious racism, but not forgiven. Forgiveness was what they would be working on for the rest of their life. This is exactly what we hear these TikTokers talk about, that you can never be cleansed of your evil racist ways, but you gotta put in the work. You gotta post a black square and apologize to every black person you see if you're white because you're racist. Anyways, I lasted four months at this school. They masked the curriculum, which included critical race theory, but instead titled it culturally responsive teaching. That's a new one. The reading list for the sixth grade school year only had books written by black authors. It was made a point to not be reading anything written by a white author. That's not racist at all. One short story my students read was about the dangers of race mixing, how it leads to confusion, higher risk of suicide, and abuse. Of course, kids should know that not to mix races. One of my teachers started a mental health club at school, which I thought was pretty cool until I saw what the club was really about. 90% of the kids there clearly had issues and they would joke about things like wanting to die because they were always so oppressed. The club never helped them on these issues and rather promoted them. They would tell each other that it's perfectly fine feeling this way and that they're brave. The symbol for the club even has a rainbow on it, you can guess why. But I think it's so messed up that a club that's sole purpose is to help you is a teacher lying to the kids and the kids lying to each other. Great school. The fact that the teacher's involved, I thought this was just like a student run club, but no. This is a teacher not telling the parents that the kids going to this club are saying they want to kill themselves. Unfortunately, I have heard, you know, students say things like this, want to die, like, how could we live in a world like this? We're so oppressed, blah, blah, blah. It's scary. And then we wonder why the suicide rate is so high. Why are people so miserable? I wonder why. It's such a surprise. Of course, it has nothing to do with this ideology you're teaching children, right? Like how they're going to be miserable forever. I was a feminist when I was 12, 13 for about two to three years. I had problems at home mainly because I was basically creating them myself. I had problems making friends at school and I thought that was because I was a lesbian. I wasn't. Would sleep at night while crying because I thought the life was unfair and if I came out as a lesbian people would not accept me I cut my hair and wanted to have a flat chest because I didn't want men to sexualize me I almost became anorexic all because the feminist online told me that all men sexualize girls and I felt disgusting in my own skin I didn't want men to look at me how the feminist described so I tried my best to look as unattractive as possible Which in turn isolated me even more from my class and I blamed them rather than myself for it Would only be interacting with feminists and I liked watching videos where women blame men on every single bad thing that was happening in the world. I thought I was lesbian, then bi, then lesbian, then asexual, and lesbian again. I would internalize everything and always thought about deleting myself because of how miserable and alone I felt. 
Now I'm 21 years old and have overcome the feminist and LGBT propaganda. I'm at a healthy weight, have grown out my hair, and I have an amazing relationship with my family. I told both my brother and dad that I was wrong and they are very happy that I'm finally at a better place mentally. I'm so happy you're doing better teaching young girls that they are going to be oppressed forever, that all men are evil, everything you experience, if it's negative, is because of misogyny, is because of the patriarchy. This is what happens. You get suicidal young teenage girls thinking that they are just doomed. I live in Austin, Texas the wokeness is very bad here and my high school has a culture fest every year well this is one of the talks it says beyond the gender binary boxes are confining yet they create tiny little boxes i went to an incredibly woke high school and when i came out as christian and later conservative i was ostracized by most of my friends i had a kid tell me to kill myself because she assumed correctly that i was pro-life that same kid, who's a trans guy, also derailed an entire biology class to try and justify trans men in women's sports, and was extremely rude, unkind, when like four people in the class started listing reasons that men are stronger than women. Which is true, generally speaking, and men cannot participate in women's sports. Because that is unfair, that makes no sense. I just can't help but notice all of these death threats. Again, from these people that claim to be so nice and so compassionate, telling everyone who disagrees with them to kill themselves. Hypocrisy. In 2020, I transitioned from liberal to right-leaning. I worked at Starbucks. Good luck. Um, at this time, and between the pandemic, Trump slash Biden election, and BLM riots, it was a nightmare. I can imagine. The thing was, I was too shy to speak my political views when people would bring it up, so I felt it was easier to conform and pretend I agreed with them. I remember this one girl saying all cops should be murdered instead of black people, and I just had to walk away because I was so uncomfortable. Like, unfortunately, I can relate to that, and I can, you know, really understand where you're coming from. It's like looking back, it's like, how could I have been quiet? How could I have not said something? But if you are in that mindset where it's like, that's all you know, that's all you've ever known is people saying things like this, it's unimaginable to speak up. I honestly don't regret conforming because they were insane, but it's sad I had to do so. I totally understand that, but hopefully you are now in a place where you can speak more freely, um, especially when you hear things like this, that all cops should be murdered. <laughs> My woke friends have tried to pressure me into not being straight for years like it's a choice. I've been told that dating girls would be so much easier and that they will eventually turn me. I'm consistently called out and put down for being one of the only straight ones. The group is super toxic, so I distance myself when I can. Not to mention, I have known two people who are supposedly trans men as friends. One who has been on testosterone from the age of 16. Another friend is non-binary yet presents feminine. She is so painfully narcissistic, she thinks she's special for things that are normal to experience, like she explained all serious just the other day. I have this thing where I get emotionally attached to the characters in books. No! Like, no sh that's the point. And of course, these same friends are obsessed with mental health and autism. It sucks to see it appropriated as an aesthetic, especially as I'm trying to get an ADHD slash ASD assessment and I feel like I can't tell them anything about that. Yeah, of course not, because then that would be your new identity. That would be all they would talk about, unfortunately. For context, I'm 18 female from Britain. Relate to the fact that your friend group is using just normal experiences and saying, I'm so special, like I found out this about myself and usually they'll get it from, you know, social media platforms like TikTok and be like, look, there's a specific label for this, there's a specific word to describe what I'm feeling. I get emotionally attached to characters. You're very special. You're very special. That's what they want. They just want, you're so different. Like learn something new. I don't know. Learn how to play an instrument. Hike up a mountain. Like actually improve yourself. Why? focus on labeling everything and trying to be special in this way. It is so annoying. Someone actually commented, oh my gosh, I had to comment because when I was in high school, I had the exact same situation with friends. They made me feel so bad that I was straight and made me totally think twice if there was something wrong with me just because I'm not part of the alphabet soup cult. Another person can relate with the non-binary issue. A lot of people, unfortunately, can relate to this. My friend stopped talking to me, ignores me at school, and she won't respond to any of my text messages just because I said that you need dysphoria to be trans which you do, and that neo-pronouns aren't valid, which they're not, because they make the LGBTQ community look like a joke, which they do. And I'm sorry that your friend isn't talking to you, but your friend seems to be brainwashed, so. I had a friend who used the fizz, pop, bop, pronouns and I used to think it was okay um, because of how much I was influenced by people. I myself used to use doll doll self pronouns. This was when I was 12. I'm 14 now and we both realized how stupid it is. I remember a time when they also got mad at me because I wanted to use she son love because she used those pronouns and said it was a part of her soul. Okay, I can't. I want to laugh but 
You know, these are children. And the problem is when we act like this is an actual gender identity. This is dysphoria because you want to mix and match pronouns and, oh, you can't take that uh, pronoun because I'm already using that pronoun. I mean, you know, children do these sorts of things. And when we involve actual hormones and actual surgeries, because kids are being kids and this is what they're into now because of technology and gender ideology, that's a problem. Here's my story. I was in college and there was a pro-abortion day, I guess, and there was this woman that was chanting how liberating it was. She had four abortions because they were male and she wanted a girl because she didn't want to give birth to a fist. It honestly hurt my heart to hear that people really believe that. That is so disgusting. So she murdered four baby boys because she wanted a girl. Okay, I have a very politically correct teacher from my government class who gives us a little piece of paper every Monday at the start of class where we can tell her about our weekend. On mine written this Monday, I mentioned how on Saturday when shopping in a Target, a group of girls a little older than me started yelling racial slurs at me, calling me a white among other things. The best part is I'm Hispanic, not that it should matter at all. When I had done nothing wrong and it wasn't even near them, I was afraid when this happened and I opened up to her about this on that week's paper because I needed to get it off my chest. She gave it back to me today and wrote a comment on it essentially saying that it's important to make the distinction that that was not racism. What was that then? I'm just wondering. If not racism. Screaming at a random person calling them a white bitch. But the whole thing of course is that you can't be racist towards white people. So when learning about the menstrual cycle, instead of using the term woman, my biology teacher used people who experience a period. So women! The biology teacher needs to go back to Bio 101. The teachers weren't supportive at all unless it was for someone's gender identity crisis and didn't even teach for that matter. I asked my math teacher once if he could clarify a topic. I was confused on in the lesson. All he said was to check his TikTok account to see if he's covered it there. Oh, great. So now teachers are TikTokers and don't actually teach in the classroom. Um, Instead of providing support for those struggling with education, they were much more focused on perpetuating the idea that someone can change genders like the flick of a switch, encouraging the idea that dudes who claim that they're women, despite that being very evidently untrue, can just waltz into the female restroom. It was a horrible environment to be in, and without any sort of guidance from the teachers, my grades fell rapidly. Thankfully, I moved to a different high school, and the difference was night and day. Despite receiving about 20% of the funding the woke high school got, teachers would actually teach the subject and were willing to help, and I wasn't labeled by any of my classmates as a bigot for having the belief that there are two genders. Finally, a good ending. I think that's a great place to end it. I'm so happy for you that you were able to get to a normal high school and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave a like and comment. Also subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!